The following is a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live, breaking into. Featuring in-depth interviews with today's most influential entertainment figures, highlighting their tips, tricks, and techniques on breaking into the entertainment industry. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host of Black Hollywood Live, breaking into. And hello, welcome to another edition of Breaking Into. I am your host, James Law Jr., and you're here on the Black Hollywood Live Network. I am a certified life coach, and you know my motto here is share knowledge, pay it forward, and help each other out. So this is going to be an episode where we're going to do all three of those things. My guest, and I want to make sure I make sure I tell you what he does and what he has done. Dear Lord. <laughs> he deserves all of this. Okay, so he received his bachelor's in music at Butler University in vocal performance. He continued his graduate studies at USC. He's also performed with these following operas, Opera Noir, the Opera League of Los Angeles, African Americans for Los Angeles Opera, the William Grant Still Music Festival, the National Association of Negro Musicians, among just others. And we're gonna talk about all of that while we're on here. It is vocal artist and my buddy, H. Warring Sharp. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Of course. Thanks for coming. Thanks so much. Thank you. So now, of course, you can follow us on the YouTube channel. We have a live chat, of course. Um, use YouTube, Black Hollywood Live. Uh, use the hashtag on Twitter, uh, which is uh, Breaking Into or BHL Online. And of course, my Twitter handle is Black Hope LA, B L A K H O P E L A. So let's get, let's just go right and dive right in. Let's dive. Let's, let's dive. dive. Let's dive right dive. in. Okay. So, you know, first of all, I have to fully admit. Now I've seen you live. Okay. And you are amazing. Please. Thank Seriously, you. Seriously. <laughs> I've seen you I've seen you live. And I didn't know, and I think I'm halfway cultured. Okay. Did not know that there were black male opera singers. Really? Okay. There are black male opera singers, there are black female opera singers. Uh, oftentimes people think that we are not present in the art form. And I have countless friends all over the world who are black, black men who are singing this art form, singing singing the house down, as we call it. Yeah, just yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so oftentimes we know, we, we see the, the, the Leontine Price, the yeah. Jesse Norm, you know, right. those, yes. those stories are perennial, but we are still there as well. We have wonderful stories from the George Shirley's to, to there's so many of us that are here and doing wonderfully well in the, in the art form. So uh, take me back, when did you get introduced to opera music and okay. do you remember what age? Well, that's a it's a twofold story. Oh, good, good. So tell me, tell, 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 tell it all. So I'm from Chicago, okay. and my my mother had season tickets to the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Uh, Sir George Solti was the conductor, and it was huge. It was one of the best. Know that name? I know that name. <laughs> yes, the, one, that name. one of the best orchestras yes. in the world. And we had season tickets, and uh, it wasn't opera, but it was orchestral music, and the okay. music just spoke to every level of my being. And I was like, oh, that's great. And yeah. my mom always tells a story, my mom and dad tell the story that I started singing before I could talk. Ooh, Yes, wow. so every response I would do would be sung. It was <laughs> oh strange, God. I was a very strange child. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I, I love that, rather weird, re Rather weird. <laughs> uh, my mother said, you didn't talk, you sang, and you didn't crawl. You scooted for like a couple of months, and then you just got up and walked. I'm a very odd person, very, very odd. So, so I sang throughout my, my, my formative years. Um, I was the boy soprano with the really, really high voice and, and, and sang at Orchestra Hall when I was five years old and, and sang whatever Christmas pageant that wow. was available. Wow. And when I got to uh, high school, someone said, you know what, he needs voice lessons. Put him in voice lessons. And so we did some research of, of voice teachers who were on the south side of Chicago. That's where you're from, right? Yeah, from Chicago. South side. That's south right, side. Chicago. I love, I, love, I love Chicago. I love Chicago. It's the greatest city on earth. <laughs> so, but I live in Los Angeles. So. But uh, yeah, so we found my first voice teacher, Shadell Ferrier, peace to wherever she is. Hopefully yes. you are listening to this and watching this right now. Yes. Shadell Ferrier, and she was out of Oberlin. She had this beautiful mm -hmm. voice, and I, I had gone to her 
her studio once and I sang for her. And she says, you have a wonderful voice. I sang some some R&B song or some pop song You remember it though, the song? I remember the name uh-huh. of the song. Like, I was trying to be, you know, I'm going to sing some R&B <laughs> or some, whatever, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah. Right. And she says, there's something that I'm hearing in your voice that is different. Okay. I said, oh, okay. I didn't know how to read music. I didn't know oh, any wow, languages. Okay. I didn't know anything. I was just a regular old 13, 14 year yeah. old kid. You like to sing. You just like to sing, you know. Yeah. And she took out this book called The 24 Italian Art Songs. Ooh, wow. There are 24 Italian art songs, that, which is the Bible for young singers. Okay, it's okay. It's the Bible. And okay, so okay. They're, they're Italian art songs that are, are geared towards singers who are just starting off. And she picked this piece called Non Posso Disperare. Mm. I Do Not Dare Despond. Okay. And I was trying to figure out the Italian and trying to figure out the music and the notes. I couldn't clap no rhythms. I was like, what did you have me doing? <laughs> and it really taught, it really taught me rather to, to open your mind, open your mind and go into a culture that has never really been presented to you. Something that is something different, something yeah. that is yeah. that you can learn. And I sat down and I learned how to count out rhythms and I learned how to read the, the translations and, and go through the Italian diction. And the music, the music spoke mm-hmm. to me so did. Okay. on a deeper level. And I studied and studied. I would go to the studio every week for my voice lesson. Wow. And she would say, no, that's not right. No, that's not oh, right. And so I would just be like, <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> And we were really practicing, we were really uh, studying this music for a competition. Uh, oh, okay. the, the NAACP has a, a yearly competition for, I know, right, for, um, mm-hmm. for African-American students called AXO. Okay. So, AXO. AXO. It's A-C-T-S-O. Okay, AXO. And okay. AXO. Um, I do believe it's... it's African Cultural Technological Scientific Olympics. So you go on YouTube. Yeah, you go on YouTube, you can find it. I'm like, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was exactly. like, oh, yeah, sure. But it, it actually um, pulls all these these concentrations from the arts to, to, to math, to everything. And they have these Olympics where we're competing. And my wow. teacher, Shadel Ferrier, was preparing me to learn this song for the competition. Okay. So competition comes and my mom and my brother come they had never really heard me sing this, okay. this type of music okay. and I got up to, and the accompanist was playing and again you were 13 I was at this time I think it was 15 or 16 15 okay <clears throat> and the accompanist is playing and my mom and my, my brother were like okay he's gonna sing another song like, we've heard him countless times yeah. and I started non posso disperar and they're like, who is this little boy? <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, I didn't win the competition. I think I, I came in second place in yeah, that category. Okay, that's right, okay. Yeah, in the other category, I came in first. And then I became a national winner in the in the actual AXO program wow. in my high school years. But it told me that, oh, wow, I can do something different. I can, do, I can be something different, authentically different, mm-hmm. and know that I belong there. And so um, I went to school. And had the best time in college, learning music, learning different languages. So you felt right at home. I like did. You felt, like, it, like they always I say did. that we call things into our lives, oh my and if God. you call this 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 part of your life, it called into your J- life. James, let me tell you, my mother sent me to this high school that I had no business being. Oh really? <laughs> it was an all male, all white, all rich wow. uh, Catholic high school. Well, and because my mother wanted me to be a doctor or a business of course, person, of course, of course, of course right? Yes, of course. Exactly. I had no business there, none whatsoever. Yeah. And the only thing that really saved me um, was the music. I, wow. I, I joined the musical. I joined uh, the musical review. That wow. that really saved me. So, um, yeah. and when I got into college, now granted, high school prepared me academically. I, I sailed through college. Okay. So I, had the, I had the best time. Okay. I had the best time. So um, so I called into existence. Yeah, that's just who wow. I am. Everything was music. How how you're walking. How we even communicate. How mm-hmm. we're having a conversation. The the rhythm of that that can be set to music. You know. I believe that. So, yeah, exactly. So how you close the car door mm-hmm. and the sound of that door and the how you same. walk. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's all a musicality music. and how you walk. Exactly. Yeah, I totally get it. It is all totally music. So um, so that's how I called into existence and. I'm doing it now. Wow. So I mean, so when when you are doing a piece, yes. What is like? What is going through your mind? Do you feel right at home? Do you feel, are you thinking about the next lines? What do you? What are you? What's going through your mind? There are countless things that are going through your mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Countless yes. things. Um, what's going through your mind is the first and foremost thing is that you are portraying a music expression to the people who are hearing. So okay. the one thing I always want to do is that I'm a mindful artist and when I'm performing, 
uh, what am I expressing? What am I giving to the person who's listening um, if they've never heard it before? I really want to communicate on a higher and deeper level. Mm -hmm. level. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. Um, obviously, you're thinking of technique, of course. You make sure, all right, am yeah. I breathing correctly? Am I in the right form? And is everything right? Am I, is my larynx low? All these things that you oh, learn okay. in school. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All, all those things, the, the A through the Z, what you have mm -hmm. to do technically. But more importantly is you're making beautiful sound. Making beautiful sound, and, and that is the goal. I want to make a sound that will change someone's life for the better. I like you know? that. Yeah, I mm -hmm. want to make a sound that the gift that God or, or the Creator or whatever people, yeah, exactly, yeah, right, whatever right. you believe, uh, the gift that God has, has given me, I want to use that gift to make someone feel better about themselves through the gift of the art of music. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm really thinking about. Yes, I'm also thinking about please don't forget the words because someone... Have you ever done that? Of course I forgot oh, so you the have. words. Okay. Yes! <laughs> don't let anybody tell you that they've never forgotten right. the words. Of course they so, have. Okay, so give me an example. One time you forgot the how, what did you? What do you do? Because you're performing. You, you keep on going. Oh, okay. You keep on going. Okay. One, one monkey don't stop no show. <laughs> so you keep on going. Yeah, you better make up something that sounds like French or Italian or German or English or whatever it is. So uh, and the worst is when you're singing in English. It's like okay, I don't know the words, dear Lord. Oh, how and, weird. Well, you know, we gotta it's make English. some things. English, exactly. The worst language is like I, I, it's my language. I'm afraid of language. <laughs> I made up the words, but no, um, that happens to all of us. You, yeah. you keep on going. You keep on going. But some people say, oh, I, I messed up, and I, I messed up the words, or I messed up the cue. But a live performance, even when you know the glitches come, is so beautiful. I'm okay. great. It's so wonderful because it's so true. It's so authentic. It's so real. It's coming from you. And everything in our lives is not perfect. No, not we at don't, all. We don't render these phrases or There's these no perfection anywhere. No, exactly. And right. so when we say, "Oh, a, the artist always wants to be a perfectionist," of course, we're always perfectionists. right, right, right. But when we render something that is true and authentic and real, that's where the real beauty comes forth. So, so that's now tell me, can you? Because sometimes you can take a song mm -hmm. and you can interpret it your own way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, because I guess I'm sure there's times when you are hired to do a performance, it's to portray, is it to portray that character exactly how they want it or can or do you have wiggle room to add your flair to, to that or... I, I think that you should always have wiggle room to, to add your to be who you are exactly. Okay. Uh, obviously, you're you're doing a role. Obviously, you're taking over a character. You've done the the work. You've actually done the character uh, research and okay. and gone through what this character needs to accomplish. What this character is going through. You you've actually done your work. Yeah, the character has a specific role within the opera. But how do you make it true to you? How do you so my Rodolfo and La Boheme might be different from from your Rodolfo, okay. but so so we might have different backgrounds. Um, we might have different um, uh, motives of how we want to express the the arias and the duets and the and the major ensemble pieces. We have different motives. So and that brings the beauty and the quality of your own of your individual voice to mm -hmm. to the forefront. So um, I can't sing like someone else. I can't right. bring my role like someone else. You can study. I, I listen to Luciano Pavarotti all oh, the good. time. Yeah. Oh my God, he's, he's a muse. I'm looking at him, I'm looking at his larynx, I'm looking at his, his, okay. his tongue, his mouth, and how he holds, and how he does this, and yada yada, bing bang boom. I'm like, I can, I can look at him all day, all night on YouTube, and I do. <laughs> <laughs> but in the moment when it's yeah. time for me to be H. Waring Sharp to do whatever I've been hired to do, I'm not someone trying to be Luciano Pavarotti or right. or anyone else. No, I'm being I'm being me. I have to bring my due diligence. I I am who I am to the role. So um, and that's what makes it much more pleasing for me. So you're I mean you're also an actor too. Then yeah, I mean, in a sense you're yes. a vocal actor. Actor, you you know what to be in this field of music okay. or any type of of, of music. Yeah, that's true. You have to be an actor. You mm -hmm. have to you're portraying. On so many different levels, yeah. so you're not just singing the notes. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Exactly, no, you know, you're portraying on so many different mm -hmm. levels. Uh, when you when you listen to some of the big opera pieces, uh, one of my favorite, Porgy and Bess, by, oh, yeah. by you know Gershwin, is amazing. Uh, my first um, opera that I ever saw was Norma by Bellini. Just amazing, oh, funny. Okay. just huge. Big old orchestras and, and both of those operas that I just named, huge. And the the orchestra, the music dictates a specific emotion. Mm -hmm. And just imagine this orchestra is giving you 60, 50, 50, 60 orchestras, just giving right. you all these wonderful sweeping melodies. 
and you come in and <laughs> wah, wah, wah. <laughs> right. like what? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, what? No, it dictates to you. The, these yeah. wonderful composers have taken this time to really pen this beautiful music, and they're dictating. They dictate. This is what you must bring to the role. This is what you must bring to the stage because the music speaks to you. It speaks to you. So, so it's a total collaboration between you and the music. Oh my God! It's no, totally... in the orchestra, I should say. Exactly. The orchestra. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Of course. Right. Of course. It's not just me singing and they're backing me. Right. No. Right. No, 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 no. Especially when you get into the composers like Puccini and Berlioz. Oh, Puccini, I've um, heard those. They're, okay. they're sweeping melodies, and and you're you're one with the orchestra, you're one with mm. the conductor, you're one with the the soprano or the the baritone that you're okay. with whom you're singing. You're you're one. You know, you have different parts, but no, the entire composition comes out as one, one voice, one thought, one amazing presentation of a high art form. How is it uh, doing duets? It's quite interesting. <laughs> so let me tell you what's yes. interesting. Yeah, please duets. tell me. Tell so me. So I think the, the the first thing that you must learn okay. when you're doing a duet okay. is your breath. Your it's, is the person the other person is breathing. Oh, okay. Yes, listening and feeling his or her breath. Exactly. There's some wonderful duets in the opera realm. The wonderful duets. But if you're not really synced in. Okay with the other singers, how is he or she going to take that phrase when they're breathing? Am I breathing with them? I, I don't want to be a, a, a counter production. I want to be Ooh, a okay. collaboration. And so when they're breathing, I'm going to breathe right with you. Exactly. When you take that phrase or if I come in, if we're singing together, we're not singing my part and you're singing your part. No, it's it's something that is mm. it's joined, it's conjoined. There's a reason why we're singing together. There's a reason why you're singing and I have breast and, and you're conveying something to me. Okay. And then I come back and I say, I, I respond to you. So. We have to really be in sync. Fully and present. Exactly. It's like that uh, that three-legged race. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay, yeah. So, you know, we tie our middle legs yeah, yeah, together. Yeah, and we, yeah. have to, we have to be in sync. There's a synchronicity that really needs to, to happen with, with good duet singing. Yeah. So, exactly. You know. <laughs> Who are some bouts? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so, now, when you listen to music, I'm sure you hear, I mean, like, the word opera mm -hmm. nowadays, it's, it can be spread to other things that are operatic. Or, or opera light, opera light, <laughs> opera esque. Oh, exactly. So you do hear. So when you hear some of that stuff, do you go, "Oh, oh my God"? Or are you happy that they're trying to, you know? I think it's a combination of both. Okay. So oftentimes when people say, "Oh, I, I don't really tell people that I'm an opera singer," I, I tell, "Oh, I do this, or I'll do yeah. that," and I don't come. I'm an opera singer. So uh, when they find out, they're like, "Oh, I love the opera. We go and see Phantom of the Opera all the time." That's a musical. <laughs> That's a musical. That is not an opera. It's a musical about an opera. Yeah, that's right. Exactly but right. One of my favorites. But yeah, it's <laughs> exactly. like yeah, it's like yeah. And then that's like anything from the Phantom. But, but, but it's not an opera. But it's not an opera. No. So people think, oh, I love what's uh, is it Sarah Brightman? Yes, yeah, Sarah Brightman. Oh, well, she's an amazing guy. <laughs> Hold the phone. She's a pop singer. She's not actually. an opera singer. Yeah, right. No, she's a pop singer. Exactly. Um, even though say Andre Bocelli, oh, when he sing, he doesn't sing opera. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But. I am happy that their ear accepts a different type of okay. music. It's like, oh, so you have a leaning to what you think opera is. And once mm. they finally go to a real opera, they're blown away. They're mm. blown away. It's not this five, six hour production of a big old fat lady with horns thing. Well, there is that as well. There but, is that, yeah, there <laughs> is that, right. But opera is, it talks about our lives. There's tragedy, there, there, there's romance, there's comedy, there's all of it in the world of opera. So mm. you're just not going sitting there like, oh, we're gonna sit here for another three, four hours and be bored. No, if you get to sit and listen to the music and see how the music dictates how you feel, when you may not even know French, you may not even know Italian or German, mm. whatever the actual opera is, but if you sit and you release all the fears and just actually say, yes, I am going to go on this journey, you understand what's going on because they're portraying such a beautiful piece of, of artistry. Is there, an, is there an opera that you've done that changed your life? I mean, all, they all change your life in little forms, but is there one you can go, that's the one that really affected changed me. Changed my life. Yes, that really affected me that you, that you actually participated in. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you this. Tell me. Um, I was hired to do Porgy and Bess in okay. 2006, uh, 2007, sorry, in, in Utah Festival Opera. And I was hired to do the tenor role, Sport and Life. 
And I got in the contract and my agent was like, oh, you've been hired to do this and this is great. I was thinking, okay, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's wonderful. You know, did I get anything else? Did I get Il Trovatore? Did I get, no, you got this. I was like, okay, great. <laughs> and uh, Poor Game Best, written by, by Gershwin, yeah. the American opera. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was one of the hardest roles to ever learn, just okay. rhythmically and learning it and, and learning um, the nuances of the, of the role. And I learned that role in my studio. Okay, you have quote air quotes apparently. Studio air quotes air quotes. I have a studio. Okay, so yeah. My studio is fabulous. My studio also happens to have a tub and a toilet in it, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> so, doesn't my studio have a tub and a toilet? You know, multitasking. <laughs> exactly. That's why I mean, that's why I mean, yeah, so, multi-purpose room. Exactly. Yeah. So every day after going to the gym and coming home from working out, I would go to my studio. And I would have this, uh, the, the actual um, Porgy and Besk, uh, the book, the actual, the music, uh, the score rather, it's like four or five hundred pages. Wow. It's huge. It's huge. And oh so, my God. Yes. And so I would go every day and I would sit and I'd go through my role and I'd, I'd, I'd read the entire score and say, what's going on? What's going on? And for those who don't know um, the story of, of Porgy and Bess, um, it, it's an all African-American cast mm-hmm. and it's, it's just wonderful, uh, wonderful pieces like It Ain't Necessarily So, Summertime, yeah. I yes, Got Plenty I of Nothing, all, all those amazing... You probably have heard of folks and ex- don't even know that exactly, it's from Exactly, that's that. from yes. Porgy and Bess. Yeah. And what I learned is even though my character is a, a dope dealer, the dreads of society, yeah, yeah, yeah. it taught me the, the entire... Opera taught me that the power of of temerity, the power of tenacity, the power of I'm going to do this. I am going to be successful. I am actually going to go, even though there everyone is saying no, you can't. It's impossible. The power of I can comes through, and I learned that in my studio. <laughs> <In> your studio. <laughs> my studio. Um, mm. An amazing time for me. An amazing time. I had just been fired from. Uh, a job in 2006 that had nothing to do with music. Oh, it wasn't okay. feeding me at all artistically. Well, you know, we know how that goes. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I was trying to make bills and yeah. you know, pay the bills and put yeah. food on the table. Yeah. And the spirit of artistry or God, whatever you want to call it, was like, no, it is time for you to step into this realm. And so um, I got fired from that job. I was thinking, oh, wow, I have to figure something out. And yeah. I got hired for this role. And that span in between yeah. those, you know, between getting fired and going to mm-hmm. Utah, I had to sit and learn the role and learn the music and learn who the character was and and put Hame or H. Waring Sharp into the character. Mm-hmm. And and it really changed my life with her because it told me, this is what is required of you mm. and I want you to do more than what is required. Mm-hmm. Ooh, okay. Exactly. So um, I had the best time when I got to Utah. I have friends that I still, that I love and cherish to this day that I met there. It's a wonderful time. And the friends were great, but just being on the stage and seeing all of your work come to fruition, everything, things that you thought, oh, I'll, I'll do this on stage, I'll do that on stage. None of that happened. <laughs> None of that happened. Because when you get there, something else takes over, something bigger and greater than mm. you. And the work that you have done, the work that you have put forth, actually goes into a bigger composition of artistry. Yeah. So, um, wow. so that that's what changed my life. What so. a great story! I love yeah, it's that. Great story. It's, one of, it's, it's a story again. You want to say some a life coach? It's a story of just when you think something bad is happening to you in your mind. Like, oh my god, I got fired! Oh my god, just stay on your path, and something good mm. will come in. Yeah, and it basically actually being fired probably helped you in this process of being having the time exactly to devote to this exactly. role, or maybe something good will come in, or maybe we'll think of it this way: something good is already there. Oh, that's true too. Something good is already there, and so we're so focused on. But no, I got to get up Monday through Friday, and I got to make sure that I, I I go to this job that I don't like, that I shouldn't be in here, even though I do the job well. Right. I shouldn't you know? Right. I, I, but I have to do this, do this to make sure that I get that paycheck every two weeks. That really doesn't take care mm. of everything that I want to do, and I'm not being filled artistically. But you see, not being fed too. We said that I totally tell people all the time. There are jobs that suck the life right out of you yes. and you don't even know it. Exactly. You're killing yourself. You're killing yourself. You're killing yourself. No, seriously, you're killing. And you yes. got, well, yeah, you can do the job. Do the job. You show up and do everything, but then you're like, once you get out of here, you're like, wow, yeah. I feel 100% better and I don't feel as dead anymore inside. Exactly. Exactly. You look forward to going to work. It's not even work. Right. It's not even work. Right. You look forward to creating art. Mm. That's amazing. Instead of going and punching my, okay, I made it here at 8 o'clock. I'm going to wait here to 9 to 5 o'clock and yeah. be done. No. No, 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 no. And we do get 
that it's tough out there and you gotta you gotta you gotta make bills gotta do what you gotta do you gotta do (laughs) yes exactly i've sold cans i've done kind of stuff i mean i'm like you know right back in the past yeah so i I get it no i get it exactly but you should always try you should always strive to at least get jobs that don't kill your soul exactly exactly i i have a i have several jobs and one of my jobs uh it's hilarious i am one of uh a singing waiter at Michelli's in North Hollywood. It's up the street. Oh, yeah. Exactly. I know. I know. It's, yeah. Exactly, all fun. Exactly. Okay, all it's, fun. A, it's a lot of fun because oh, sure. I have a lot of friends who are Broadway and who are, who are doing these amazing cover bands. That yeah. Go, and yeah, we're selling pizza and all that, but we get to perform. We're oh, always there yeah. performing for the guests. And people are coming and they're like, they're so <laughs> excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they come for the food, but they really want to be entertained. Mm. And that's an amazing point. So yeah, it's not the pinnacle of what I do. You know, no. I'll, I'll go to San Bernardino Symphony Orchestra and I'll do that big old Rodolfo role, and in, in, actually yeah. in a couple of weeks, and I'll actually go and do the Messiah because that's coming up. But everything that I do now is a blessing because it is it is somehow attached to my music making, to my artistry. So. Um, yeah, so that's what I. It's. Okay, so I just I, just, I can talk to you forever, of course. Forever and ever. And, and we'll say hi to Angel. She's in, she's in the chat room and she's saying wonderful story. Hi, Angel. You know I mean? And you just and she just asked uh, what, where where can we see you next? You just mentioned briefly two little things. Yes, so I will be at uh, San Bernardino Symphony Orchestra is doing their Christmas concert December twelfth in San Bernardino, um, and we're doing a huge portion of La Boheme. We're doing the second act, um, which is actually. Around Christmas time, it yeah. is um, yeah. the the second act is actually during the Christmas Eve. It's actually Christmas Eve, that and so sense. we're doing a huge, huge portion. I'm doing the entire act with a wonderful cast. I'm oh, also good. doing the the duets at our out of um, La Boheme, so it's going to be huge. It's going to be big, and so come on out, Angel. Come on out, well, Angel. Come on, exactly. girl, and if you're it. in Los Angeles, I'll be okay. doing. Uh, the Messiah at Home and United Methodist Church. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. exactly. The day after I'm in San Bernardino Symphony <laughs> Orchestra. Exactly. You know, I got to gotta work, gotta work, gotta work. So, um, yeah, so I'll be doing the Messiah, yeah. um, Every Valley, and Thou Shalt Break Them, all oh, those wonderful yeah, things yeah. of Messiah. Yeah. We'll be doing that the next day. Oh, my God. Yeah. I wish I was in town. I'd come see you. Come see me. I you. Mm-hmm. So, because of wonderful people like him, we can bring him here at Black, Black, I'm sorry, Back, at Black Hollywood Live. I just want to give you guys a little taste of something. So if you go to DraftKings.com, that's DraftKings.com, you can do a fantasy football league thing, and you get paid. Apparently you get paid for it. So um, there's one week fantasy. I mean, there's no, there's no season long commitment. It's just a one week thing. You can do it bi-weekly. And what you do is every week when you play, you actually get, uh, they crown a new millionaire, so to speak, on there every week, every season. So... You know, football's here until about January. So you go on, you pick your players, you pile up points, uh, and then if you win some stuff, you get some cash. Um, that's it. So uh, it's a it's a fun thing to do if you like football and you're all in second. I love football actually, but um, you can do that stuff. But it's called DraftKings, and um, hurry to DraftKings.com now. Use the promo code Black, like in Black Hollywood Live, Black Hope LA. Use the code Black, the code Black for a free shot. At a million dollars um, in the millionaire maker event. So try that. And also, you can do enter the word buzz, like our major company after buzz media, uh, for a free entry at draftkings.com. So that's draftkings.com. Draftkings.com. So thank you for them for being able to sponsor us, be able to do this kind of stuff here. Have folks like H here with us. Um, now, do you recommend schooling? For, for a vocal and for if, if, someone, if someone has a vocal potential or a kind of ability, okay. do you, did you feel that schooling was the best thing for you? And you, do you like offer that for other people? You feel like you should do that? Yes, yeah. I do. I do. I first and foremost, I recommend schooling for any and everything. Okay, I do. I do believe that the <clears throat> the art of education is so necessary. Mm-hmm. Whatever it is, whether it's music, whether it's um, acting, whatever, it, whatever it is, mm-hmm. I do believe that, especially for people of color, we need to be in the classroom. We need to be in the classroom, even though life is a classroom. Yeah, it is. Yes, yeah, so we need to be in the halls of academia. We need to be there because everyone needs to know that, uh, even ourselves, we know that we can take any t- any course of study and master it. Any course of study, and the reason why I say that I <clears throat> I think education is is a necessity is because when I was going to school, I breezed through college, I had a wonderful time academically, Mm -hmm. but there were a lot of of students, my classmates, who were white 
and didn't Definitely. understand who I was and mm. how I I got to where they were. We were sitting in the same same classroom and had the same instructor, and their path to to this you know to the place where we met was different from my path was different from my path. Mm -hmm. And so it was a wonderful meeting of the minds. Like, oh, how did you get here? Well, how did you get here? I, did, <laughs> I took the SAT and I, I, I lied to the, to the school and got in just like you did. And, and, and not to, t you know, to, to disparagingly talk about them, but no. they, they don't see- they This is very important yet. stuff, yeah, so exactly. yes. Exactly, they didn't see a lot right. of people of color from where they originated. They yeah. didn't see that. And so yeah. once we got to the university setting and they see people from all walks of life, it opened up their eyes. And so the, I always say that, yes, schooling is important. Uh, just just go. It opens up your mind. It opens up your mind. You see things differently. Mm -hmm. You are allowed to expand this thing called a brain, a mind, mm -hmm. and to see things differently. People say, oh, school's not for me. Yes, it is. Yes, yeah. yes, it is. You need to find something. And and maybe you may not like the, the academic halls. I understand right. that. I get right. that. But there is something for you there to learn. There is something for you there. I agree. And there's something for them to learn from you. I, I totally agree with that. So yes, totally I do. Um, for me, when I got to my first year of college, I, I couldn't. I told you I didn't know how to clap a rhythm. I couldn't read no music. I couldn't do nothing. <laughs> All I was make make beautiful sounds out of this thing to call the mouth. <laughs> like, ah, and people are like, "Well, how many can you clap this rhythm, or can you see? Can you do the music theory? Can you actually? Oh, music theory. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Can you analyze this? You know, this is a one chord. This is a four chord. This is a five chord. This is a deceptive cadence. I was like, "You speaking Swahili to me? I don't know what you're talking about." <laughs> However, yeah. I I had come from an academic background, so. So I had to humble myself and sit myself in the seat and learn what was being told you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I had to like, wait a minute. I have to learn music history. I have to learn music theory. Uh, I have to learn oral. Yeah, it's all connected. It is all connected. It's isn't all it? connected. Yeah. And so it made me a better musician. It made me a far better musician. I had to take piano. How is taking piano gonna make me a better vocalist? Well guess what? You have an accompanist. And so the accompanist is actually playing. And once you sit down and figure out what the accompanist has to do, no, uh, look at that. You're a better musician. And people say, are you a musician? Yes, I'm a musician. Oh, what are you? I say, oh, I'm a vocalist. No, but what's your instrument? Oh, uh, they don't get it. They don't get uh, it. Oh, hello. <laughs> exactly. This is my instrument. Exactly. So, these are the musicians and these are the vocalists. No, uh, my, we're, we're all yeah. musicians. And so, uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I do believe that the the halls of academia are are, are a must, are a must, yeah. and so um, it doesn't have to be traditional school. It doesn't yeah, have right, to, you know, go right. to the four-year university, right, right. but you go somewhere so where someone is teaching you, where you're learning a craft, it, whether whatever uh, genre of whatever whatever study it is. So yeah. do that. Why do you, you know, um, actually there's a there was a when I went and saw you, mm -hmm. um, this was a, like a year or so ago, a couple okay. years ago. Um, I had an interesting experience when I was there. So it was the, the furniture store. Oh yes, exactly. I and the store. Yes, yes, yes. You say the furniture store. It, it was, was an upscale furniture. It store. was. No, it was <laughs> exactly. In a good neighborhood. It was fine. <laughs> exactly. Um, and you had some great pieces. But no, the thing that was funny was that my brother-in-law and I were there, and he's Hispanic and I'm black, and mm -hmm. they thought we were. They, so a girl came up to me and was like, "So, how much is this piece?" And I'm like, "We don't work here." <laughs> so what I want to bring up to you is that I wonder, have you had some experiences out there where you're the talent for the show, and they come some up to you? Some experiences? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, name how one or two. How long is this show? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm only have ten hours. I think. Exactly. Yeah, just, I mean, a few. I mean, a few experiences. Um, I mean, I how's will tell you one of my. <laughs> Tell it, tell it, tell it, tell it. I have so many. I so, love it. Tell um, it. I was contracted to sing, to canter a funeral. This was years ago. Okay. Um, out in Orange County. And um, was count, yeah, I was contracted to sing this funeral. Um, it was a Catholic funeral. Um, fairly wealthy man had passed, or a rich white man had passed. And um, in L.A. or any any large city, people know who you are. They know. Mm -hmm. right, I need someone to do this funeral. I need someone right. to do this wedding. I need. I need. I would love an operatic singer. Oh, oh okay. So yeah. you know, names get thrown around. Yeah, of and so you know, it was my turn to get a job. So, and um, <laughs> and exactly. Yes. And um, this is when I was still working in the private in the in the in the private sector. And this lady had lost her father. And. Um, I was working in the hood, Jefferson and LeBron. Oh yeah, the hood. Ooh, yeah. And they good. said, "Oh, we have this tenor. He's he's well known. He's at work right now because I had a day job." And she says, "Well, I want to go visit him." And I said, "Well, I'm in the hood. You can come to my my day job." And she came to her came to my job, oh. and she sat in my office and then she told me what she wanted. I was like, "Okay, I can do that. I can do that." All right. And um, I thought nothing of it. And so the the funeral was on Saturday. It was in Orange County. Drove, okay. got to Orange County. Um, 
shirt and tie. I have all these scores and because she mm. wanted certain music. And okay. Fine. Okay. And I'm walking into the church, and this is before the family have arrived or any of that stuff. And so I'm walking to the church, and I, I guess the the bereavement committee or whatever the people of the church came up to me and they said, "Oh, hi! You must be the the florist. You're here to deliver flowers." <laughs> I don't have flowers in my hand. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I have on a shirt and tie and jacket and, and but right. but I'm I'm delivering flowers. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, no, I'm 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 cantering the service, and so their eyes were like, oh. And in that moment, some big old burly white guy with cut off shorts and flip flops and dirty feet and big old you know had yeah. had all these flowers. Where I put the flowers at? I think he's the delivery guy for the flowers. So, right. And I get that often. Um, I was uh, had a chance to canter at Stephen Wise Temple, um, not too far. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. Huge synagogue, yeah. um, upscale once again, and got contracted over the phone. They were like, "Oh, please come out and 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 do this." And I was like, "Okay, that's great." And I said, maybe I should tell them over the phone, I ain't Jewish and I ain't white. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I got there. This is for Slikot, for the high holidays, for his young people. Oh, yeah. Rosh Hashanah and and um, I drove up to uh, Mulholland Drive. Oh, yeah, over there. My, yeah, exactly. Yeah. amazing. Parked over there. And I had just come from the gym, so I had a bandana on my head, and I had some <laughs> oh, sweats. Oh, no. And, and, you know, it's like, but I have my stuff in the car. I got my yes. clothes in the car. I'm yeah. like, I'm going to run in because I've been practicing with him for the whole week. Yeah. And security... Ooh. Because I I'd never knew because I've been in church all my life. Yeah, we, we ain't got no security. No, no, sure, no, no like, black church. The, the deacon board, exactly. <laughs> you know, but the security guards were walking to me rather quickly and, and forcefully. And wow. Saying, hey, may we help you, sir? Are you are you okay? May how can we help you? What wow. are you doing here? And I looked. I was thinking. Why is the FBI coming up <laughs> towards me? Because that's what it felt yeah. like. Oh, yeah. And I didn't know, okay, this is a different culture for me. So I was in the synagogue, and uh, there were times when synagogues were being bombed. There were times, you know, yeah. they, oh, they yeah. were targets. And right. So, right. so I didn't know that. And so um, I said, no, I'm the cantor. And they looked at me like, yes, I'm the cantor. And they're like, oh, we're sorry. And the director of music comes out. Yeah, this is our cantor for tonight's service. And so I get that often. People will look at me like thinking that I am something else. Than yeah. and not what I am. You know, so, so what what advice would you give people of color out there who um, want to do pieces of music? It may not even be opera, but just that that we're not genuinely known for. Or do it. You know, there's plenty of them. So just do it. That's, do your, that's it. your advice. Do it exactly. Do it. do it. Let no one tell you that you can't do something. Yeah. So when someone tells you that you can't do something. That that is too much rent that they're having in your mm, head. That's too much. Yeah. Just, yeah, just too much. And no one knows your ability but you and the God that lives with inside of you. What you can do, and you can do all things. You can do all things mm. that you put your mind to. It. Um, I don't like when people say, "Oh, you're not able, or you are not allowed, or you can't do something," mm. because what they're doing is they're they're throwing their own insecurities and their own deferred dreams onto you. Mm -hmm. And I don't have time for that. Why would you try that? It's just too hard. Ex ex like, exactly. Like, well, why would you not? Yeah, because somebody you? does do it. Exactly. Somebody, I don't know if bad English, but so, someone does some do, do it. it. Somebody do, do, do it. it. Exactly. Somebody That's better English. Yeah. Do yeah. Somebody <laughs> do do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, but, but yes. someone to, to throw their own deferred plans and yeah. dreams onto you, like, ugh, that's nasty. Yeah. Don't yeah. do that. I so. agree. Very yeah. good. I, I like to just do it. Do it. Can you do a little something for us? What? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm all, I know I'm just surprised. I'm all a little something. What? It's just something, nothing, nothing too long, but a little something to give us a taste of your. You did a little bit earlier, a little tiny bit of your vocal talent. Okay. Just a little, a little. Just something. a little something. Yeah, a little something. something, something. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, this is a wonderful song that I, I learned years ago. Wonderful spiritual. Okay, I like it. Over my head, I hear music in the air. Over my head, I hear music in the air. Over my head, music in the air there must be a god somewhere oh my god yeah. that was
was good. Thank you well, for thank doing you. that. It was beautiful. Ain't song. warmed up. Ain't done nothing. I know. Me exactly. So you got, but that's him. That's him not warmed up. <laughs> so. That's him not warmed up. I tried to find some honey sticks, but I just didn't. <laughs> exactly. Have it in my purse. Sorry. <laughs> so oh, there you go. Make applause. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I love it. 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 And so, because uh, we're actually almost out of time, Are you which is, I took this by fast. Oh my god, that's crazy! You have to come back another time. I have to come back another time. Another time. Exactly. But I just want to briefly touch on. Uh, you also are. I mean, you are a vocal artist, and you do uh, on occasion do vocal teaching. Yes, I do. Talk a little bit about I that. Do. I do. I used to uh, be a teacher at the Neighborhood School of Music in East LA. Oh wow, East LA! I know, right? Many, okay, many, many many moons ago, and I taught these young kids, Aww. these young kids, and they would come in and they'd learn these Disney songs oh, and. Dear. They were so adorable, and I started to to teach privately, and then I, I left the whole teaching thing to concentrate on my own career. And just last year, I got back into doing master classes. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, so I, San Bernardino loves me, I guess. Uh, San Bernardino. <laughs> exactly. Go on, San Bernardino. SB. So, Thank you, San Bernardino. So they're Thank you very much. Th- exactly. I know. <laughs> they're... Um, their public school association, um, for the past two, three years, I've gone out and I've done master classes for all of their high schools and um, their middle schools. They've brought all their choirs and music groups in. And for an entire day, we do a clinic. Oh, and how fun. they sing for me and I give them pointers of how to to be better musicians, be better um uh, better art, artistic yeah. types, and um, it's an amazing thing. I go back there next month. I do believe in January. Okay, and they're like five hundred students. Oh I know God, it's a lot of students, wow. a lot of students, and so they're so excited to to present what they've been working on yeah. for so long. And I get a chance to be humbled by their their amazing ability to to actually sing and perform and dance and, wow. and to give what they want to give authentically. So it's an amazing time. And so I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, oh my God, I have to critique them or I have to make something, I have to actually say something that yeah. can make it better. But they don't know how they're really changing my life. You oh, can yeah. see the cycle of it. So yeah, I can I can Aww. teach, but they're really teaching me that it's an amazing yeah. thing to be a musician. Like that. So I asked my, my guests two questions, the yes. same two questions. So I, need, I just need your answer. The first thing comes to your brain. Uh-oh. One is, I believe uh, language is very important. It is. And it can also stop us in our tracks. And it can. But it can also lift us up and and move us forward. So I love that. What is one word you think we should take out of our vocabularies? One word. One word. Does that make you think we come to the show? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I ask every single guest this on my shows. Impossible. Ooh, I like that. Let's take that out. Um, Now, what is one word... What do you think we should add back into our vocabularies? Well, I know the word that was taken out first. <laughs> <laughs> to add back in yes. or to use more? No, either one, yeah. Um, either one, yeah, either one. Because the same difference, basically. It's kind of like split the difference. Possible. I like that. Impossible, impossible. All things are possible. Impossible means I am possible. So, you know. Oh, yeah, I like that. Exactly. I, li- I, li- actually, I like that. <laughs> so, I like that. But yeah, exactly. Imagine if you are often told that, yes, you can. Yes, you will. Yes, you may. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes. To so every dream that you can yeah. use. Imagine when you're given the green light. And not just given the green light. Say, girl, shall I go and do that? No, no, but with with certainty and with with pride from those who are overseeing. Imagine, say, yes, yes, yeah. James, this is possible. Yes, that you can be this amazing uh, life coach and, and be this amazing uh, interview. Yes, yes, and yes, Hame, you can be this wonderful artist through the, the vocal realm. Yes, you can. Imagine okay. being given the spirit of yes. I like that. I like that. We're going to end on that because I, I, lo- I love that. It's just perfect. <laughs> yeah, okay. Great. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Come, mm-hmm. I'll come back whenever you call. You have, you have, to, come back, you have, to, come, you have to come back. He's going to come He's a friend of the show now. He's going to come back. Mm-hmm. So now, folks, we will be back on Monday with a special episode. I have the uh, the uh, writer, director, creator of the documentary, Can You Dig It? It's going to be fun. So you have to come back on Monday at 2 p.m. So it's going to be a really great thing. And we're going to do this a special episode because next week is Thanksgiving. And I want to give thanks to all of you for giving me the opportunity to bring H with here and me every week when I come on here. Thank you so much. And we'll see you again next time for another Breaking Into. From producers Maria Menu-
Nunos, Dario Piston, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. Hollywood Redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.